What is your latest novel I can't begin to tell you about? I Can't Begin to Tell You is about war, the Second World War, and it's set in Denmark, and it takes a family, and it shows the divisions within a family, as indeed was in Denmark itself, which was divided in its loyalties, either to Germany or to the Allies. And it's about how individual members of the family decide on their positions and what they do about it. And it's about undercover war, going to work for the resistance, all that entails, the danger, the adventure, and a lot of people were drawn to the adventure of it. It's also about the men and women who service those people working undercover. As you can see in the pictures here, mm. there's a line of people taking down the messages from the agents in the field, which were in code. So they would take down the Morse messages, and then they would be decoded here. And here were the, the sort of slightly more lowly ranks, possibly. Um, the very patient listeners, because the agents in the field were given a time, a schedule, when they had to transmit back to home station uh, in Morse code, and these people would be listening with their headphones on, patrolling the airwaves, uh, listening for the messages that came in, and they would scribble them down, and they would take them off to the decoders here, and then they would be passed to intelligence for decisions to be made. But they were very important, these people, and we forget this. We think about the agents in the field who were mm. amazingly brave, I mean, extraordinarily brave. But these people, the patient plodders, were also integral and vital and urgent to the whole operation, and without it, it couldn't have existed. And I wanted to bring that all into a whole in a, in, in a, in a story which is full of the divisions and the tensions and the adventure and the remarkable feats in, during a war, undercover war, and what happens in particular to one family in it. Why did you decide to write historical fiction or move towards historical fiction? I think it's sort of coming back, really. My first two books were historical. It was uh, what the first one was about the French Revolution, and then I wrote one called Light of the Moon, which was about an undercover woman, agent, female agent, going into France for the SOE during the Second World War. And I did a massive amount of research, and research is very addictive, and I loved every minute of it. And I met some of the agents who'd gone into France because they were still alive then. Oh, wow. So I was very privileged. But after it was published, um, the phone went and this voice said, are you the author of Light of the Moon? And I said yes. And she said, well, I used to work for F section, the French section in SOE, and I liked your book, and can we meet? And we became very good friends, and over the years I've kept in touch, and she's told me things. So I had written a whole lot of books after that about the domestic life, because my own life was very domestic, and now my children have gone. Somehow my mind, I felt, was turning outwards again, mm. which I think happens in a writing life. You change orientation. So I thought, well, I must go back there because I hadn't finished with the subject. I also was very curious because what you write as a young writer is very different from the older when writer you when you go back. And so I was very interested to see what I would do uh, with the same subject as the, as the older writer. Having said that, I couldn't go back to France because I think a lot of people had written about France and secret agents, and including me. So I wanted to go and explore new territory, and I thought, hmm, Denmark. That was a country very divided, and nobody knows much about it, so I, I'll go and explore that. How did you come up with the idea for uh, I Can't Begin to Tell You? Well, um, having decided to go and look at Denmark as an area that hadn't really sort of been overdone, so to speak, um, I read this book, which was about the SOE in Denmark, and that gave me a lot of information and facts and a bibliography. So I started chasing, as one does when you're researching a book, down the bib lines of bibliography and reading memoirs and anecdotes and biographies. And I came across a biography called Monica, Heroine of the Resistance, which was about a woman called Monica de Witchfield. She w married a Danish aristocrat. She was British. Uh, just after the First World War, they had three children and they went to live in a wonderful house in Lolland, on Lolland, one of the islands in Denmark. 
and it had a big lake under it, outside it. And during the Second World War, she worked for the SOE, or certainly the resistance, because she couldn't go back to London to be trained. And he supported the Nazis as a landowner. And um, I thought, right, that's a family divided among itself. And I have my story, really. And it went from there. Do you think that women made better spies than men during the Second World War? That's a really interesting question, and probably the people best could answer it is MI5 or MI6, but uh, I don't feel at a bottom that men or women are different when it comes to how good or not they are at spying. It's to do with their temperament mm. and how they learn their craft. But certainly during the Second World War, women had an element in their favour, which was surprised because the enemy, the Germans, really didn't expect women to be spies. So they didn't look for them in the way that they looked for men. And a sort of middle-aged housewife scuttling about with a bag of vegetables over her arm, concealing perhaps a weapon or a message, certainly wasn't something they necessarily looked for. And they could, women could blend very anonymously into the population, which was um, certainly in France, for example, uh, where the men had been taken off to Germany to work in the factories and there were a lot of women left behind. They sort of blended into each other and went around their daily lives looking innocuous. So in that respect, I think women achieved enormous things during the Second World War as spies and did very well. But again, it came down to temperament when they were faced with really, really difficult situations and how they responded to interrogation and capture and the rest of it. Um, again, was, was temperament rather than their sex, I think. Do you think that the conflicts in Kay's personal life, particularly with her husband's um, politics, would have been common during the Second World War? Mm. Well, you think about the extent of political divisions these days in our own political life, there must have been a lot of divisions. Possibly women kept quiet, I don't know, because they were less used by and large as, as, as a sex to sort of voicing their opinions, they, a lot of them would have worked perhaps um, against their husbands, say, like Kay does against Bra in my book, I Can't Begin to Tell You. Um, yeah, there must have been divisions. But probably women, as I say, with less political sort of experience, less experience in, in having a political voice probably hid it. Um, and also, they must have tried to protect their children. I think that's an imperative that must have been uppermost in a lot of women's minds as they worked through the war and tried to exist. That's what they had to do, preserve their families. That was a political act in some respects. Mm. Kay makes some very difficult decisions and huge personal sacrifices. Um, were those aspects of the novel particularly hard to write? And I think... What I was writing about there was the mother with the young and that instinct to preserve them and protect them at all costs sort of arrives as they arrive into the world, by and large. And it never leaves you, I think, as the parent. And I wanted to show that in Kay. She was going to protect her young come what may. Particularly, as she probably, and well, I know she felt quite guilty about having precipitated them into this dangerous situation in the first place. So to her, it would have been entirely logical and right that she put herself in the firing range, so to speak, uh, in order to protect them and to atone for what she's done, really, in putting them into a really dangerous situation in a war that really sh the people who were waging this war showed no mercy and were never going to show any mercy. And she knew that. She knew that. Did you face any huge challenges whilst researching? Yes, well, first off, I can't speak Danish. <laughs> and <laughs> apart from tack, when having watched Borgen, um, <laughs> and, um, and I didn't know Denmark, so I had to take myself off for a long weekend where, of course, it was only superficial, but I managed to sort of sniff up the atmosphere and the layout and I went to all the various relevant museums and ate some fantastic food. And I loved Danish women because they were all on their bicycles looking very stylish but, you know, really very at ease in their skin and I thought this is an interesting nation, it really is. And um, then I had to obviously try and get translations of some of the primary sources but that's not too difficult. And people are very, very um, 
anxious to help, if you ring them up, they, they very often tell you things and, and enjoy doing so. So one can sort of batten on the goodwill of people. But in the end, it wasn't just about Denmark and the research, although, of course, that is the backbone and the spine of the book. It's about what the novelist is about, which is human emotions and decisions and the shifts in sensibility and the things that make up the spirit um, and putting it together in a story. And that applies as much here to anybody you know, writing in English as it does to anybody understanding and writing in Denmark. So in a way, you had a bridge there mm. uh, without having to worry too much about it. So once you've got the apparatus assembled of the Danish story, the Danish history part of it, you could then apply, hopefully, all the things you knew as a novelist, your technique, your vision, your understanding, hopefully, of human nature, which is what you're writing about. Uh, you can apply that and bring the two together in the novel.